that's called self seeking God. See, you got many people like this. But out of the same breath, they saying the law don't matter. The law is done away with. You don't have to keep the law. See, that's why we all go to church as a whole. People go on Sunday. That's why they done done away with the feast day. They done done away with the dietary law. They done done away with the law, period, really. That's why fornication runs rampant. Adultery runs rampant. Murder runs rampant. Let alone something like idolatry where you worshiping falsehood. Don't nobody, even, they don't even mention that at all. You don't never hear no preacher talking about y'all committing idolatry, you better stop it. You don't hear nobody talking about that. You worshiping another God. Don't nobody talk about that. Because it's all running rampant. But he said it here. He that turns away his ear from him, the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Let's go to the New Testament, James. James 2. See, there's power in your faith when it's backed up with works. But when it's not, you don't have nothing coming. And that's what people haven't realized. James 2 and verse 1. James 2, and we're going to skip to save a little time. You can read it all when you get a chance. James 2 and verse 1. Go ahead. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to person. See, now James is telling you here, straight up, don't call yourself having faith and still going against what backs up the faith, the works. Because that's what people is doing here. So James is warning them. He said, don't have the faith of the Lord Jesus. Don't say you got faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, but you turn around and you being a respecter of person. Notice he's talking about something that's in the law that God said thou shall not do, being a respecter of person. So that's what he's dealing with. But now, skip down to save a little time to verse 8, because he's dealing with that law, them being a respecter of person. Go ahead. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. Those he talking about, you do well if you fulfill the law. The royal law. See, that's the greatest law. Where it's two greatest law, love the Lord first. And the second is love your neighbor. So you can't have one of them without the other. And that covers all the other laws. That don't do away. Some people say, well, see, that do away with all you got to do is love. Look, if you love the Lord, you won't do none of the stuff. You won't even be breaking his Sabbath day if you love him. You won't put no gods before him because you love him because you're making him mad when you do those things. If you love your neighbor, Romans 13 said you won't steal from him, you won't kill him. So you're still keeping other laws when you love, when you keep the royal law. You're not doing away with it like people make you think. So he said if you fulfill the royal law, you love your neighbor you, as yourself, you do well. Verse 9. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin uh -huh. and are convinced of the law as transgressors. See, you're a sinner because you're breaking the law. That's what sin is. And that's in the law. Don't be a respect of persons. Go ahead. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. See, now I had people read this to me and say, or quote it to me, because they didn't even know where it was. I had to tell them. But they quoted it and said, see, if you break one, you break them all. So they, t they quoting it to say, ain't no need of trying to keep the law. See, again, they turn their ear away from hearing the law. We know what their prayer is. It's abomination. See, they not backing their faith up. So they don't have no power when it comes with, with God. So he said, yeah, whosoever keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of. He's not saying throw out the whole law because you can't keep it all. You know, people quote that and they, they say that. See, you can't keep all them laws. Do you know how many laws it is? <laughs> they say that in a minute. Somebody went in there and counted them, I guess. Don't you know it's 613 laws? You can't keep all them laws. Well, you can keep one at a time. And the one that you can't keep, God ain't going to do nothing to you because if you can't keep it. But you can do a whole lot more than you think. And there go your faith again. See, people want to use their faith for stuff they want, like God is a genie in a bottle. That's, what they, that's the kind of faith they want to have, what they want from God. They don't want to have faith that they can be obedient, do his will, and be blessed. They don't have that faith. They can do all things through Christ Jesus except what God says. <laughs> uh -huh. 
That they all they like to quote that, but it don't apply when it comes to being obedient to God and doing his will, because they say you can't do that. See, that's what they use this for. They take this out of context and say, see, he said if you break one, you break them all. He did say that. He's not saying it to say throw them all out the window. He's saying it, look, don't be neglecting one of them. Right. That's what he's saying. Don't have faith and still call be a respectable person. Verse 11, go ahead. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Right. Now, if thou commit no adultery, uh -huh. yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. See, you're still in trouble. If you don't commit no adultery, that's good. But if you turn around and kill, you're still a transgressor of the law. So what is he saying? Don't do neither one of them, is it? And also, we can add, because it's biblical, that he that said don't commit adultery and don't kill also said remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So you can don't, you can not steal, not commit adultery, not kill, but if you break the Sabbath day, what are you? A transgressor of the law. I actually, I'll never forget, I seen a guy on TV, he actually made it nine commandments because <laughs> he didn't want to deal with the Sabbath day. And he, he stumbled himself. He was on TV. He said, yeah, he, and he was surprised because he said, you got to keep the law. I said, what did he say? It's like he heard me say, that's right, you got to keep the Ten Commandments. I mean nine. It was a holiness church. He said, you got, that's right, you got to keep the Ten Commandments. No, I mean nine. And that's what he said. Because he didn't want to deal with the Sabbath day. <laughs> he thought some kind of way that one got changed, but that don't fit, do it? Because you still breaking the law. But now skip down to verse 14 and go ahead. What doth it profit, my brethren, Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save See, him? See, that's what James is telling you. You can't say, he started off said, don't have faith of Jesus and be a respecter person. So you cannot say, talk about faith, faith, faith without having some works to back it up. And he was telling you the works that you need to do is to keep the law, wasn't he? He said, the one that said don't do one thing, he said, don't do those, so don't neglect this law over here. He said, what doth it profit, my brother, though a man say have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? The answer is no. Go ahead. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, uh -huh. and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, uh -huh. be ye warmed and filled, uh -huh. notwithstanding ye give them those things which are needful to the body, uh -huh. what doth it profit? See, you don't give them what they need, but you just give them some idle words. See, that's what people got now, that a lot of idle words that they say is faith, but it's empty words. Go ahead, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. See, he's making it clear. Faith, if it don't have works, is dead. So faith alone can't save you, can it? No, sir. So that's out the window where some people say, all you need is faith. You ask people, you say, well, do you got, you can ask people tomorrow. You can go to a church, stand outside and say, do y'all keep the law in your church? No, all you need is faith now. You don't need the law. All you need is faith. Not according to the New Testament that they say they believe in. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. Go ahead, verse 18. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Mm -hmm. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. See, you can't show faith without works. That's why the title is The Power of Faith, when backed up by works. If it's not backed up by works, it is empty faith. It is no power in your faith if it's not backed up by works. That's the only way you can even prove that you got faith, is by your works. See, anybody can say anything, but... The old saying is true, the proof is in the pudding. But go ahead. 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. See, it ain't enough to say you believe that there's one God. Some people say that, well, I believe in God. But yeah, if you don't operate in the faith by doing what he's telling you to do, it ain't going to do you no good. You believe there's one God, that's a good start, he basically saying. Go ahead. Thou doest well. Mm-hmm. The devils also believe and tremble. See, he said the devils believe and tremble, but they still in trouble. Go ahead. But wilt thou know, O vain man, mm -hmm. that faith without works is dead? See, he called that person vain. Go ahead. 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works uh -huh. when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Go ahead. See thou how faith wrought with his, with his works, by the works was faith made perfect. See, Abraham did more than just say he had faith or believed God. He backed it up. And he didn't just back it up that one time when he offered Isaac up or got prepared to offer Isaac up. He backed it up, period, all his life because the Bible says in Genesis 26 that Abraham kept God's laws, his statutes, and his ordinances. That's what the Bible says in Genesis 26. Some people might just say, see, yeah, you just got to do some works that, you know, like do, do one miraculous thing that God wants you to do. No, it's an everyday thing. Abraham did it every day. He kept his laws and statutes. So if we're going to have the same kind of faith, we'll do the same thing. Go ahead. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, mm -hmm. and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Go ahead. And he was called the friend of God. Go ahead. Ye see then now, ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Not by faith only. Now, why is the Bible telling us we need some works to go with our faith? But most people don't believe that nowadays. Some people have missed it. Go ahead. Likewise also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? See, she did something. Go ahead. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. It's dead also. It ain't no good. It's just empty talk. But now go to Hebrews 11, and we're going to wrap it up. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. But now when you back in your faith up with works, you can trust in the power that come with it. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, uh -huh. the evidence of things not seen. See, he said faith is the substance of things hoped for. So that's going to prove. But it got to be something that will prove something. Your works is going to prove that faith even exists, that faith is even there. But go ahead. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Uh, because of their faith, they obtained a good report. So faith didn't start here in the New Testament. He said the elders, which refers to the Old Testament. They obtained a good report by their faith. But their faith was backed up with something. Go ahead. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Uh-huh. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Go ahead. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Abel did something. But his, his works is showing he had faith. He offered a more sacrifice than Cain. He offered his best, whereas Cain thought he could just offer anything. People think that nowadays. You don't have to do nothing, just believe on God. Look, you, you're not offering your best thing. For the people that say, well, you know, those laws too hard, well, you better get busy working on them then. If they that hard, you better really get an early start. Get up early in the morning. Start working on them. See, that's what Abel did. By faith, he offered unto God a more sacrifice than Cain. By faith, he did something. Go ahead. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous, uh -huh. God testifying of his gift, uh -huh. and by it being dead, yet speaketh. Go ahead. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. See, he didn't just get translated just because who he was. He did something. Go ahead. And was not found because God had translated him. Uh, see, he didn't die at all. Go ahead. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He did something. Go ahead. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, you got to believe that, but you got to know that he's a rewarder of not just anybody, of them that diligently seek him. And how do you deal with seek him? You find out what he wants you to do and you start to do it. That's what you got to do. That's how you exercise true faith. That's how you operate in the power world. But now go to uh, verse 17. Skip down a little bit to verse 17. You can read this on your own too. We're going to save time. We're going to hit some more people to have faith. Go ahead. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. 
And he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son. See, Abraham had faith, but it's telling you they did something with their faith to prove it, to back it up. 